Chapter 10. Body Language I sing the body electric. Walt Whiteman. Leaves of Grass. Our bodies are miracles. Self-regulating, self-healing, bio-machines. Instruments tuning us to the world through our senses. Bio-vehicles that walk, run, swim, dance, sit, work, sleep, eat, poop, touch, cuddle, and more. We can hurt, bruise, and break our bodies, and, astonishingly, they repair themselves. They get sick and get healthy again. They grow in age, and eventually, they die. Understandably, we identify with our bodies. They are our bio-homes. The way we feel about our bodies is written all over us. You can tell a lot about someone by the way they carry themselves. Are they guarded or open? Do they mate your eyes or not? Do they hunch their shoulders or stand tall? Do they hide or reveal themselves with their clothing? Despite the gift of our bodies, we waste a lot of energy judging them. How do we measure up? How do our bodies compare to other people's bodies? Are we thin enough? Strong enough? Are we too tall or too short? Are we beautiful or good looking enough? There is so much pressure in our culture to be thin, fit, and beautiful. How can we possibly make the cut and fit in without making ourselves crazy and possibly unhealthy? Can we find a way to accept and be grateful for our amazing bodies? In this section, I invite you to explore and write about your body, starting with your hands, skin, and belly, and moving into more sensitive areas. You have an opportunity to express your true feelings about your insecurities, gripes, prides, and pleasures about your body. We often feel shame about our bodies, and this makes us shut down to the beautiful gift they are. It helps to write down the bad feelings or say them out loud. It's liberating and healing to express our true feelings about our bodies. Let's dispel the societal myth about what makes our bodies beautiful or not by finding our own reasons for beauty, based on how we feel rather than on how we look. And finally, let's move into loving and accepting our bodies. Try looking and feeling from the inside out rather than from the outside in. Try imagining how you would relate to your body if you'd never seen another body to compare yourself to. Try imagining that you've never looked in a mirror and your experience of your body is based solely on inhabiting it. You will have your body your whole life. I encourage you to love, celebrate, and care for the miracle of your beautiful body. Hands. Hands connect us to the world. They are an extension of our hearts. They open and close around what we keep and what we give. With our opposable thumbs, our hands are amazingly inarticulated tools that enable us to create and make anything we can imagine. We perform intricate tasks, build houses, make art, feed and clean ourselves, hold a baby, emphasize a point in a conversation, type, touch, pick things up, play an instrument, throw a ball. Hands, like people, come in all shapes and sizes. What do you do with your hands? Invitation. Take some time to study hands, yours or someone else's. Consider everything you do with your hands. Can you imagine not having hands? Ever injured one of your hands where you could only use the other one for a period of time? I have. Try using your non-dominant hand for a whole day to write or draw, or even brush your teeth. Just write. Write about hands. What are all the things you do with your hands? Write about the images, feelings, and associations that come to you when you think about your hands and everything you do with them all day long. For even more fun, ask yourself a question and write the answer with your non-dominant hand. Examples. Hands. Jenea, 15. Hands. You creatures, you long-fingered friends, searching out every notch to touch and taste with fingertips. 
You whisper songs on my body in the morning. You yawn and stretch. Curl back to sleep more. But by midday, you found your voice. You speak out loud, gesticulating. Clap, snap, point, shake when you don't get your way. You don't believe a word I say until you touch it. Reach for your friend, take her hands in yours. An intimate meeting, like two people in the hands, doorways. Keys into the temple of another person. I felt you close in a fist, splay open in wonder. At your best, an invitation. You ask for more or less. I've seen you end it with one quick sideways swipe, universally recognized as no. Stop. Enough. You are so quick to cover my mouth, hide my face, my laughter, my tears. What to do with you when I speak in front of people? How to get you to sit quiet in my lap? Yes, you fidget, you pick, you climb into my mouth, my hands, curious, skilled, my constant companions, my pets. Wave hello, wave goodbye, Jacob, 16. Speak under the table, in sign language, when no one can hear, spell letters on your palm. Seek out places that are good to hide, good to feel. Rings of silver, rings of gold. Gypsy friend's fingers flying on a dark guitar. Half moon anchored, a nail bed boats. Sail home alone after a night of shining. A warm hand takes mine. A secret is passed in braille. But gone too soon, wave hello. Wave goodbye. Skin. Our skin is the boundary between us and the world. Many expressions in our language refer to skin. Being comfortable in our own skin. Someone or something getting under our skin. Something making our skin crawl. Rubbing us the wrong way. Certain emotions affect our skin by giving us chills or goosebumps. Skin can be scratched, bruised, cut, or burned, but is very resilient. It regenerates, and most of us have few scars from when it was wounded and healed over. As we age, our skin loses elasticity, and our face becomes the wrinkled road map of our lives. Our skin tells the story of our journeys in scars, stretch marks, acne, tattoos, wrinkles, what stories and poems are written on your skin? Invitation. Think about your skin, yours or someone else's. What do you notice without judgment? Be open to the stories and poems of someone's skin. Just right. Tell the story about something that has left its mark on your skin. Do you have a scar from an accident or surgery? Do you have stretch marks from when you were growing or when you had a baby? Do you have a tattoo? Example, hummingbird. Eliza, 17. They called me one when I was a little girl. I, who was always flittering around, light as a feather, determined as a bee. My eyes iridescent, my cheeks flushed. Never could sit still, always dancing off. To the next sip of sweetness. So when I went off to art school and all my friends were decorating their skin with ink, I wanted one on my left shoulder so I could look back and remember. I didn't know it would hurt. The tiny wings, the red throat, the sound and breeze as they hovered for one infinitesimal moment with pointed beak. Supping up the midday need, the circles they made in the air, chasing each other, drunk on a sunny day, above the pear tree. I wanted that kind of love. Belly. You might not think so at first, but our belly is a place of power and wisdom. Our center of gravity is in our belly, 
and Chinese medicine and martial arts, the source of all our energy is located in our belly, about two inches below the navel. Western science says our belly is our second brain and it's connected with as many neural pathways as the brain in our skull. We say we have butterflies in our stomach and not in our belly. We say quit your belly yacking. Trust your gut. Does your stomach clench or relax in response to how you feel? Do you starve yourself or overeat in relation to your mood? Are you proud of your muscular six pack and the sit ups you do every morning? Or do you wear a loose shirt to hide the bulge? A vulnerable and possibly erotic place, our bellies. How about the terrain of our navels, where we were attached by umbilical cord to our mother's womb, like a piece of fruit attached to a tree? How do you feel about your belly? Are you in touch with the power and brain of your gut? Try some belly love. Put your hands on your belly and taking belly breaths. Breathe in and out. Letting your belly make contact with your hands. Filling your hands on your in-breath. Say hello to your belly with your hands. Listen to your belly through your hands. What does it tell you? Thank your belly. Love your belly. Listen to the wisdom of your belly. Invitation. Think about your relationship with your belly. Do you tend to stuff down challenging emotions such as anger, sadness, and hold them in your belly? Do you trust your gut? Just write. Write about your belly. Express all the positive and negative feelings and emotions you experience in your belly. Go for it. Have fun with this one. There's usually a lot of feelings and images to work at with here. Example. My belly. Positive and negative. Anais, 12. Negative. Rotting bad food. Positive. Positive is eating up all negativity. Negative. Closing in and out with my nervousness. Positive. Dancing its feelings out. Negative. Not being able to eat sugar, grains, or dairy. Positive. Why I am small. Negative. Cramps grow stronger and stronger by the second. Positive. What a gift to be alive. Negative. My bloated stomach is as large as rainbow lollipop. Positive. My stomach is as oval as a light chi fruit. Negative. Screaming, I am hungry when I'm not. Positive. I have so many friends like colon, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Negative. No negativity. Positive. Please, more positivity. Negative. But what can I say? There has to be a little negativity. Positive. Stay in the moment and stay positive. Body language. We spend a lot of time telling ourselves how to think and feel about our bodies. But what if we allowed our bodies to speak to us? What stories would they tell? Invitation. If we allowed our bodies to speak to us, what would it say? Does some part of your body have something to tell you? A message, a question, a rant, a pearl of wisdom. Let your body speak. What story does it want to tell? Just right. Close your eyes and listen to your body. Does a certain part of your body call your attention? Allow this part to speak. Write down anything and everything it has to say. What does it want you to know? Allow your body to tell you its story. Example. Lips. Gillian, 18. Lips. You succulent little fruits. You tender little creatures. Two crescent moons meeting in the middle for a midnight kiss. Wiggling and waggling the whole day long. Puffed out and pouty, taut and angry, pursed, pissed, and pushy, demanding persistence, spitting and spatty, won't take no for an answer, won't let you get a word in edgewise, or soft and open, wishing, 
wanting, asking, smiling with joy, smiling with anticipation, smiling like a little devil, chewing and cooing, nibbling and nitpicking, smacking and smooching, humming and singing out loud, or, uh uh-oh, yelling, then silent and withdraw. A dam holding back a river of fury, gates locked, closed for business. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Retreat into a silence, louder than words. Body love poems. Embrace and love your body. It's the most amazing thing you'll ever own. Anonymous. Invitation. Now it's the time to celebrate your body. Consider your favorite part of your body. What do you love about it? Describe the way it looks, moves, feels, and functions. What is your relationship with this part of your body? Be honest, sassy, bold, silly, seductive. Just right. Write a love poem to your favorite body part. Describe it. Celebrate it. Example. What my tongue has seen. Violet. 11. My tongue had seen the inside of calamari, which my eyes have not. If she's lucky, she's seen the tip of my nose. She knows what the backs of my teeth look like. I'm pretty sure only my dentist knows what's back there. She's seen everything I've eaten in the jelly bean I spit out. My tongue gives me information on whether that candy is sweet or sour. My tongue has only glimpses of a mirror. She thinks she's enormous. She dreams of closing her senses to that gross, chewed-up food and focusing instead on the cheering of her taste buds. Of all the body parts, the tongue is the only one who knows taste. But she can also feel and twist and see with her one flabby finger. My tongue has played dress-up with ice cream. She has danced with gum. Her gymnastic skills are divine, but she's envious of ant eaters. My tongue helps tell stories and jokes. She's seen poems and presentations. She knows what it is to be heard. Dig deeper. Now it is time to write a poem to a part of your body you judge, criticize, ignore, feel shame about, don't ever talk about or simply have never considered or celebrated, such as, but not limited to, your hair, hips, thighs, calves, feet, toes, back, arms, chest, breasts, booty, genitals. Be willing to not know what you're going to write until you write it. It's your choice whether to share this poem or keep it to yourself. Get artsy. Get a roll of recycled art paper or tape together a bunch of paper bags and have a friend trace your body. The tracing doesn't need to be perfect, just a rough outline of your body. Write your body poems inside and outside the outline of your body. Write love poems to your body, write from the different voices of your body. Parts. Do you see a theme emerging? Use colored markers, draw and decorate, color yourself. Beautiful, wise, wonderful, weird. Have a blast. Three secrets of sex. Our teen years are usually when our sexuality begins to bloom. We are bubbling with hormones, sexual feelings, and a new curiosity about others. And it can be both exciting and confusing. It sure was for me. You can feel like we're entering uncharted wilderness. And in a sense, we are. How do we reconcile our instinct in our intellect? How do we make wise choices? Where and to whom do we turn for guidance to help us navigate our way? We can easily get lost and hurt in the sexual wilderness, or we can learn to trust ourselves, track our choices, be true to ourselves, communicate clearly and openly, and make sex and sexual feelings a healthy and fulfilling part of our lives. Some people are born knowing exactly who they are and what they want sexually, while others need time to explore and experiment. 
Your way is the right way. Your sexual orientation, gender, identity, and relationship style are your choice. What matters is that you are in integrity with yourself and others. Voice consent and safe sex practices are essential on the part of everyone involved. As we mature, sex becomes integral to our lives and our relationships. And yet there is this nonverbal agreement that we don't discuss it. It is, after all, how we all got here. When my parents told me about the birds and the bees, they basically boiled it down to, this is how we make babies. They never mentioned that it feels good or that I might like it, or that the experience could bring me into a deeper connection with myself and my partner. My mother never even talked to me about my clitoris. That's like telling me how to make ice cream but not mentioning that it's delicious. How is this possible? I believe our capacity for wise choices, greater fulfillment, and wholeness as human beings necessitates open discussion about sex. Whether within the privacy of our poetry and our intimate relationships, or in the larger context of our communities. I will share a few secrets that I've learned over the years. Take what works for you, ditch what doesn't, and do your own safe and healthy research to learn what's true for you. The first secret to sex is being true to yourself. Be yourself and be true to who you are. Listen to your body, mind, and heart. You're the only one who knows what is true for you. Trust yourself. If you don't, keep learning until you do. Be careful not to change yourself into what someone else wants. You'll come up unfulfilled. Don't comfort or contort in order to fit in and be accepted. You'll never be happy this way. Find out who you are and accept yourself. Loving yourself, being true to yourself, is the deepest sense of belonging there is. This is your power. Use it. The second secret to sex is communication. Talking clearly and openly about sex with your partners can create a whole world of trust, intimacy, and fulfillment. There is plenty to discover, experience, and share sexually. Be curious. Ask questions. Practice deep listening. Speak up for yourself. Sex is a shared exploration in which anything goes, as long as you and your partners are in consent. Yes is a spectrum with many shades of what is permissible to be determined by each person in each new experience, and no is a complete sentence that needs to be respected. The third secret to sex is beginner's mind. In Zen, the term beginner's mind refers to approaching something with fresh eyes, experiencing something as though for the first time. So rather than buying into conditioned models of sexuality, we can tune into our own felt experience, taking our cues from inside rather than from outside ourselves, and allowing our beautiful, free, sensual bodies to respond naturally. Approaching sexual connection with this kind of openness invites us to feel, discover, express, and share ourselves fully in our own way. In doing so, we make ourselves at home in the wilderness of our sexuality. The passion, electricity, and nourishment we feel when our sexual energy is flowing can become a potent elixir that feeds our life forces, fueling and turning us into greater depths of aliveness and connection with ourselves and our partners. If you are currently being sexually abused in any way, or if you have at any time in the past, please get help and support. You are not alone. There are effective therapeutic tools available that address and unwind sexual trauma, returning people to wholeness. If you are struggling with gender identity or sexual orientation, please get support. It's important to your survival and well-being. Invitation Think about your relationship with sex, your sexuality, your gender identity, how or from whom did you learn about sex. Whether you're new to sex or more experience, call to mind your best and worst sexual experience. What made them good or bad, and why? 
What did you learn from them? What would you like to do differently next time? Are you able to talk about sex with your partners? Do you feel empowered sexually as in knowing what you want and being able to ask for? Do you have any concerns or fantasies you'd like to explore in your writing? Just write. Write about your relationship with sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity. What is your experience of gender? What is your experience of sex? What does sex feel like for you? Write about write about what you like or don't like about sex. Write about a good or bad sexual experience. What are your sexual concerns, desires, fantasies? With respect to healthy boundaries, it's your choice whether or not to share your sexual poetry, and with whom, do what's right for you. Examples, we, Lorelli, 19. Your hands, your body, your lips, your breath, your voice, on me, in me, with me, lush, velvet, rapture, you inside, me, me inside, you, know me, know you, we, the divine on which we flower, he, she, they, Taylor, 16, I am not to be confined, or defined, or refined, or assigned. I want the biggest container I can find with secret passageways, hidden doors, magic gardens that lead to new adventures each time I journey there. I don't want to be squeezed into a jar that determines my shape. I don't want a lid screwed down or tampered into place. I'd rather be a girl than a boy. As a girl, I have so much more space for self-expression, moods up and down, color and creativity, giggling with girlfriends, and no man's land. But I'd rather be a boy than a girl. If I'm a boy, other people don't expect me to live up to their expectations of beauty and politeness. I am my own authority. I say whatever I want. I make my own choices. I make my own mistakes. I choose my own success. So I choose neither and both. I choose to be a living, breathing human being. Where all my colors flow high and low, where there are no limits on how I explore, express, speak, walk, dance, love, dress. I am okay being a mystery.